Well, good evening, everybody. It's a little bit of an early start. We had some things get shifted around in the scheduled day of. But we're excited anyway to bring you live coverage of Georgia Highlands, the men's basketball program in their regular season finale here at home, second to last game of the regular season before they head on the road one final time. And then we'll get ourselves into playoff time. It's crunch time. All the teams in the GCAA here in the conference battling for seeding. And this is an especially crucial one. Second place is still within reach and probably the most likely outcome for the visitors today. That is Central Georgia Tech, the Titans, coming out of the Macon Warner Robins area in the center of the state. And let's see if we can get you there, five. And you got Emmanuel Jones out there, important guy for them, a uh, freshman, but plays like a more experienced player. Christian Torres is also out there. He's another forward. Jeremy Sams looks like he'll play the shooting guard spot. Rafael Rubel, he's the point guard. And I don't see him out there yet, but you have to imagine Florian Tenebe, the shooting guard, will be out there too, the sophomore. Leading scorer on this team, he absolutely exploded in the reverse game, the home game in Macon for Central Georgia Tech. And JXC is going to have to key in on him. Danny Catula with you guys. Pleasure to have you along with us on the Chargers Sports Network live on YouTube. Again, it's our last home game here of the year for the women or the men. Could be our last basketball broadcast of the season. And if it is, we are especially glad you're here with us for it. Go ahead and get your Highlands starting five as well. Cameron Baldwin's in there at forward. You got Kamani Hopkinson on the wing. Jaquan Nelson, important scoring option at guard. Muhammad Conte, another guard who will likely bring the ball up the floor. Another guy who can handle the ball in the guard position is Jakeem Payne. So those are your five for both sides. Central there in those dark blue unis. And in the white strip with black and orange trim. That's Georgia Highlands here at home. We're in the Corral, Six Mile, Georgia, an incorporated community just south of Rome. And we are underway. Zeros on the board. First half action. 15 seconds in. Early chance. Fade away. And that one falls short from Jakeem Payne. Defensive board and going up the floor quickly. That's a hallmark of this Titans team. And the early buckets goes from Kasai Fontenez. And an immediate timeout for GHC. They did not like what they saw on the defensive end. That's something that they are going to have to figure out. Cannot allow easy points on the other side of things. And so head coach J.J. Merritt will take the opportunity to settle his team down a little bit. 2 nothing early on, 19-27 left very early on in this first half. Give us a chance to set the scene a little bit more. These two teams, as mentioned, did play earlier on this season at the Titans' home floor. And it was a pretty underwhelming day, especially on offense for Georgia Highlands. A 17-point loss to the Titans of Central Georgia Tech. It was 21-20. The Chargers actually led that one away from home at halftime. And in the second half, just weren't able to put enough points to compete with the second-ranked team in the GCAA as things stand right now. Albany Tech, by the way, leads at 12 and two in the conference. They are almost mathematic, mathematically uncatchable at this point for the one seed and hosting rights down there in Albany, Georgia. Left corner three will not fall and that's not something we're gonna say often tonight about Jakeem Payne. He can shoot it, nice job defensively and that was the adjustment I think that Coach Merritt wanted to make. Definitely worth taking that 30 second timeout to make it. Nice job coming from behind. That's Cameron Baldwin, sophomore forward out of Ackworth, Georgia, Alatoona High School grad. And his defensive play will keep the ball with the Titans, but will not give up an easy two. Instead, it's an easy three, as it turns out, from the right corner. Goes down from Jeremy Sims. He's underway with three points. You look at that game the other day. That was February 17th that these two teams played before. It was 22 points from a guy who was not starting. Florian Tenebe figured he would be in the lineup. He started that game, dropped 22 points. But he doesn't start this time. Long two. It'll just rim out, but the offensive board and the right block. Going up for it with the putback. That's no good. And the defensive cleanup 
comes from Christian Torres. Baldwin inside trying to finish and could not get his layup to go. Here's Fontanes. He'll hand it off. Ruel. Fontanes again and a little bit of a miscommunication. Tried to find Jones, but he had already cut to the basket. Still found a Titans teammate. Left wing, end of the shot clock, no good. On the expiring three-point attempt, defensive board on the bounce goes to Kamani Hopkinson for the Chargers. Extra pass, wide open, that's not the guy you want to leave. Although he missed it and the rebound is going to lead to a foul on the floor. Let's see if they got, did they get Georgia Highlands or Central Georgia here? Yes, yeah, they're going to call it on Central Georgia on the loose ball foul. So the Chargers do get the ball back. 5 nothing. Georgia Highlands still not on the board here at home. This is Muhammad Conte with it. Drive inside. Kicked it back out. Extra shovel pass to the top of the key. This is Jaquan Nelson. Missed the three earlier on and had it poked away defensively. Nice work by Rafael Rubel. So Rubel, the point guard, proving a worthy matchup against Georgia Highland's best offensive weapon in Jaquan Nelson, the freshman guard from right here in Rome. Handoff, Conte. Goes away from the screen and see what they might go with. It uh, looked like a carry, but I don't think that's what they called. What did they get here? Not sure. Some sort of violation on the defensive end for the Titans. So Central Georgia Tech going to have to defend for another possession. I think just now we're going to get the explanation to the scorer's table. Unfortunately, David and I here with the live stream are on the opposite side, so we don't know what they're discussing at the moment. 17.40 to go in the first half, and again, 5 nothing is that early lead for Central Georgia Tech. Titans coming into this one second in the conference, 11-4, and, and it was a violation. I don't think it was a foul on anybody. Ball stays with GHC, though, as they get it in. Long two, ill-advised, but the offensive board. Backside rebound, and the layup goes from Cameron Baldwin. He's got two, the only two for the Chargers, and some nice full-court pressure at the right time is going to force the Titans' turnover. GHC gets it right back, and all of a sudden, momentum swinging towards the Chargers here in the corral. Checking out is going to be Torres. And we got somebody in. And that actually is Tenebe, so somebody to watch on offense. Defensively, he's beaten as Kamani Hopkinson opens his account this evening. He's got two, and so does Cameron Baldwin. 5-4 the score. A little over 17 to play, and we'll see full court pressure again. It's going to be a man look from GHC. We've seen him go with some zones over the course of the season as well. They've got a couple different press looks that they like to bring out. And it's been a good time so far to bring it around and force the Titans into something new. Here is Tenebe. He'll kick it towards the free throw line where the shot from 12 doesn't fall. It was put up by Fontanis. Going to his left against the screen. Payne couldn't get it to drop. Had some contact inside too. He's slow to get up and now he'll try and join the defensive effort. He won't have to. He can stay up there because Cameron Baldwin made a nice play defensively trying to throw the hammer down was Hopkinson. It didn't go. Offensive board for Conte and a wild sequence will turn into free throws for Georgia Highlands. That would have been a monster finish from Hopkinson if he could have pulled it off. Feels like one of those all-star dunks in the dunk contest where you go for something fancy of course, in a real game, you don't get two or three attempts. First free throw is good. It was the first trip to the line for either side. Muhammad Conte drops it. Transfer from Northern Oklahoma Community College, where he spent his first year of eligibility. He's here as a sophomore, 6'4 guard, but also has the physicality to play inside if it's necessary. Coming out of the Bronx in New York. Wings Academy, where he played his prep ball, Conte. Second one is good. It's flush down the middle and 
So that'll give Conte two true free throws and his first two points of the game. It's also the first lead of the game for GHC. After Central had gotten out to a 5-0 start, it's a 6-0 run for Georgia Highlands to take the lead by one rejection inside. Jayshon Jones elevated. He'll go the other way, coast to coast. His layup too strong. Defensive board long out to the three-point line, and it's picked up by Rua. Fontanez kicks top of the key. A lot of space in the three ball. Does not drop. Defensive missed assignment not punished by the Titans. GHC going to try and drive. The finish. Creative and powerful from Jaquan Nelson. He's on the board tonight. It's four different scorers for the Chargers using a lot of different offensive sources to add points to the tally. Eight to five is the lead. And that was an and one foul going against Torres. And the free throw is good. So Georgia Highlands doing some things that have cost them games in the past here in the corral. They missed free throws and they made some kind of offensive errors. Just kind of mistakes turning the ball over. They have not shown any of those things tonight playing really controlled, consistent fundamental basketball and it's type of performance that head coach Merritt is going to love to see. Of course, Central, one of the better teams in the conference. Certainly a team that could make a run in the NJCAA National Tournament if they make it out of the conference. So nothing done yet. We're only five minutes into this game, actually a little bit less. 15.42 to go and counting in the first half. Lots of basketball left, but a promising start. For GHC at home. Top of the key, Fontanez. Not about driving inside. He's drawn the defensive assignment of Mamadou Diop, and he drew a double team as well. Nice shovel inside. Unselfish pass. Emmanuel Jones finishes it off. 9 to 7. Georgia Highlands' lead is cut in half. Titans going to get a full defensive sequence in as GHC will slow things down a bit. Kick to the corner, the fake three. Conte can't get it a little bit too strong. That was exactly the look the Chargers wanted. And they wanted this even more because the Titans just completely gave the ball away. It was a pass directly to Diop. And well, Georgia Highland's going to return the favor with a turnover of their own. Foul inside as Mamadou Diop, the Senegalese forward, did not get his hands up in time. He will commit the personal inside. Really not a bad foul. He wasn't trying to foul there, but I don't mind it, especially when you got a layup inside. Most likely one you're going to score. So instead, they're going to have to earn it at the line, the Titans. 16 and 13 on the year, 11 and 4 in the conference. The GCAA's second best team down by two to Georgia Highlands early in this one. You're listening to the Chargers Sports Network. Okay, back after the first media timeout of this contest. Again, you're scoring 9-7. Highlands on top of Central Georgia Tech. And a lot of different scorers getting it done for GHC. Four baskets, well, three baskets and a uh, perfect trip to the line, I should say. One of those baskets included an and one. And Highlands have been effective. Four different guys have scored. First free throw is good. On the other end from Christian Torres. And his second is going to fall as well. So we're even at nine, deadlocked for the first time since it was 0 0. It'll officially go down as the first tie of this contest. Already had a couple of lead changes as well. Shaping up to be a pretty good one here in Six Mile. 
Jayshon Jones has it. He'll kick it top of the key to Nelson. Driving. Underneath pass. That was clever, and it wasn't rewarded with a finish by Conte. Missed layup. And trying to get up the floor quickly is Florian Tenebe. This is Fontanias. We'll kick it top of the key. Faked three from Jones. Picks up his dribble, right wing. Fontanias again. Kicks it out to the corner. And well, that's your leading scorer, but not the best of shots from him. Tenebe couldn't get it to drop. Transition, three ball, no good. Offensive board, Diop. Struggled with it, but picked it up and kicked it back out to Jaquan Nelson. Payne has it now. Jakeem Payne gets it on the ground. Calling a play under 10 to shoot, now down to seven. 13.43 and counting in the first half. Gets a double screen, gotta get it up to one to shoot. And they didn't know. Jaquan Nelson not aware of the shot clock situation and it'll be a needless turnover as a result. 32nd violation, 13.37 to go in the first half, and the score is still 9-9. So it's Tenebe, Fontanias, Rugo, Jones, and Torres, the five for Central. Tenebe has it now. Hopkinson playing defense. Kick to the left short corner, switched opposite corner, top of the key, the extra pass, three ball, no good, and a shooting foul as Kamani Hopkinson got in that shooting space. On a three-pointer, there's a, a kind of a certain radius around the shooting player that you can invade and make contact with him in there, and I think that's why Hopkinson will get whistled. Jones had missed the three ball, but now he's going to get three trips to the line. Neither team has missed a free throw so far tonight. Of course, still early in this game. Georgia Highlands three for three at the charity stripe, and so is Central now with that bucket. Two more to shoot for Jones. Listed as a power forward. True freshman. One of five on the Titans roster who are in their first year. Second one no good. So Jones, one of two on this trip. He's got one more coming. A couple of changes, as we'll see. Abraham Ibazimakor, former D1 player, transfer in from Georgia State, the Panthers down in Atlanta. He's in. And you've also got Giovanni Ekuebla. That's my best guess at that pronunciation. 6-1 freshman guard, defensive board. It's going to fall to Ibazima core. He is a raw prospect inside. Super physical. Got a lot of size. And you'll see him inside now. Had it poked away. He attacked Central last. Titans were pleading their case. And it's going to be GHC ball underneath the basket. 13.08 to go. It's 10-9. Advantage Titans. Got to get it in. And they do. Soaring up and scoring is Kamani Hopkinson. He'll drop it in. Not the best of defensive sequences. The paint has to be sacred. Every coach teaches that. It was not. Defensively for the Titans. Hopkinson will take the easy slam. Jayshon Jones defensive board after the shot no good from the left wing from Jones. Pass inside, nothing. Stolen away. Here come the Titans on the break. Tenebe goes up. He is... Met physical defense from Kamani Hopkinson. I think he probably got away with a foul inside there. He did go straight up to his credit. That's probably why he got the benefit of the doubt. And so we'll see Florian Tenebe check out for the Titans, replaced by Jeremy Sims. 12 and a half to play. Still first half action. It's GHC 11 and CGTC with 10. This is Equibla. And, well, they were trying to get it back to him. But Payne had his pass deflected. He'll see it again after he passed it and got it right back from Jones. Still Payne kicks it left wing. It doesn't fall. Toilet ball from Equibla. But you see the raw talent inside rebounding for Eva Zimakor. His putback never had a chance to go up. It was stolen away, but a nice offensive board in the first place. And meanwhile, on the break, efficient bucket from Emmanuel Jones. It's 12-11 now. And the Titans retake the lead. Equibla. Right wing. That is his range. 
but Payne didn't take it. The extra pass inside. Eva Zimakor got a guy to jump and scored on the easy lay-in. Eva Zimakor's got his first two. He comes from Togo. And as mentioned, a transfer from Georgia State. He didn't use any eligibility there, though. Rolled at the school. Things didn't quite work out for him. Wasn't able to break into the team. Made the transfer to GHC. Offensive rebound after the missed three. I think he got his own, actually, Fontanez. Was able to dish it up to Christian Torres. And from the right post, he scores. 14-13. The lead just keeps changing hands. 11 to play in this first half. Long three, Ekwe Blah. He has been very willing to shoot early on. And whatever little contraption that's up there, some little strap or something that's helping hold the basket together, I would imagine, it hit that as it bounced off. I've never seen that happen. I've called quite a few games this year here in the corral, and that's a first for me. David, our uh, broadcast engineer, has been here longer than me, but he's nodding too. Not common, that's for sure. Some miscommunication as for who was coming off for the Chargers. It looks like Cameron Baldwin's in, and in the end they've decided Hopkinson out of Lauder Hill, Florida, will be the one to take a seat. Central, not too much issue getting across half court despite the pressure. Dribble picked up by Torres. He had to just lob it back out there to Rubel. Rafael Rubel. Nice handles. Deep three. Splash. That's just a nice bucket. Not a whole lot you can do defensively about that. Rafael Rubel is going to knock down the three. Chargers trying to answer down by four. Ekwe Bla put his head down. Couldn't drop the layup, but the cleanup from Cameron Baldwin goes. Atworth native has it down to a two point deficit. 17, 15, 10 and a half left in the first half. Nice scoring and it's a lot of variety for both these offenses. Getting to the bucket and scoring in different ways. We'll add another one as Torres is gonna knock two more in. Christian Torres scoring pretty well inside. Good shot selection early on from him. Looks like a 3-2 zone look almost. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Probably going to want to trap in the corners, I would think. Although now they've transitioned into more of a man look. Tend to shoot. Baldwin shovels underneath. Conte's blocked. Offensive board. Eva Zimakor finishes. He's got four. Oh, and that's a really bad sight. Just as a neutral, but especially... For the home fans here at Highlands, Muhammad Kante is not a guy you want to lose. He's on the ground, and as he fell, there was kind of a, a scrum underneath for the ball. The shovel pass inside ensured that, and Ibazimakor came up with it and scored the bucket, but Kante, a casualty in the meantime. Looks like the referee crew is going to have us take a media break and take advantage of the stoppage in play. We will get an update on Muhammad Kante's status whenever we can, although we do see him getting up and hobbling off on his own power. That's certainly good news. He was holding kind of his shin area on his leg. I would imagine he took kind of a hard hit underneath there on the shin. And it's just maybe in a little bit of pain. Doesn't look like something too serious. Of course, that's good news. But with that, we will take a break. Under 10 to play in the first half. It's 19-17. Central Georgia Tech on top of Georgia Highlands by two. Back with you, Danny Catullo with live coverage here on the Chargers Sports Network at GHC Men's Basketball. And Chargers are actually a little late to break in the huddle. 
They're just going to let him get the ball in without the Chargers being ready. And so there's guys still on the floor. Chargers barely got another five out there in time. And a transition three as a result. It's a little short off the front of the iron and doesn't fall. GHC gets the defensive board. Baldwin thought about a three, drove inside, instead kicked it out. Hopkinson, extra pass, left corner, Ekwe Blah. Oh, he just can't get the roll early on. That's two now. They looked like they were going down. He's feeling it, though. You imagine he's going to keep shooting. Clearly has the confidence to shoot from out there and the ability. It's just not dropping for him. 9.17 to go in the half. And Jeremy Sams has it, gives it away to Rubel. Rubel goes to his right. Stops on a dime. He's at the top of the key now. And he'll just launch a long three. Made one of those earlier. This one does not go. Second shot in a row for the Titans. It just falls a little short off the front of the iron. Extra pass. Snake eyes from Jaquan Nelson is going to put Ibazimakur back on the line. Abraham Ibazimakur got fouled on his way up. Jaquan Nelson, such a good scorer and Great offensive players do things like that. When you know you can score, go into the basket, you know you're going to draw so much defensive attention. And again, two teams that know each other. They played each other in Macon earlier on. They know to key in on number four, Jaquan Nelson with the extra pass. That's gorgeous basketball. Giovanni Equebla is going to check out the Norcross native. He's kind of on the other side of the Atlanta metro, on this north side of town. Second free throw is going to drop for Iba Zimakor. So he makes both, and we're tied at 19. And it's Payne, Nelson, Iba Zimakor, Baldwin, and you got Hopkinson out there as well. And none of those five were anywhere near the wide open. Rafael Rubel, who knocks down a two. Bad news continues as the needless pass is going to go well away from the intended target of Jaquan Nelson. A couple of mental lapses, one on each side of the ball for GHC, and as a result, Central's got the ball. They're up by two. 21-19 the score. Double team there, the trap. Nice job to pass out of it. Left wing. Fontanias will give it away. A few extra passes. Nice job to swing it around the perimeter. They got the three ball look they wanted. No good but the offensive rebound to Fontanas. Another no look pass. It's great on selfish basketball on the perimeter for Central. Just not getting their three ball. Looks to drop right now. Eight minutes to play in the half. Jaquan Nelson avoids the travel. And he will pop a three. The step back doesn't fall. And the defensive rebound going the other direction. Here is Jones. He knocks it in. Drew from 15. And it's 22 to 19. No, I'm sorry, 23 to 19. Four point advantage for the visitors from Warner Robins. Three or four campuses. Just trying to count them before the game started of Central Georgia Tech. Almost all the GCAA members have multiple campuses. Georgia Highlands is one of those, of course. We're here on the flagship campus in Floyd County. Three to shoot. Long three ball from number three. And there's a lot of threes, but it wasn't lucky that time from Payne. That's got to be a charge. It sure is. Offensive foul. Cameron Baldwin puts his body on the line, and the sacrifice pays off. So still a four-point game. It'll be a foul on, I think they're going to get, Montanias, who had the ball there. It's Mike. No, actually, it was Christian Torres driving in. That's significant. It's his second foul. I'll have to be a little careful. Still a lot of game to play. It's 7-10 to go in the first half. Two fouls. He's got to be a little smarter. Only two fouls on Georgia Highlands in the half as a team. Five on the Titans. Nobody in the bonus so far. Jakeem Payne switches. Baldwin had it poked away, but a foul in the process from Kasai Fontanias. And they'll make a substitution central. And so that is the sixth foul now. So the next foul is going to put GHC in single bonus territory. Right now the scoreboard is saying that's the second on Fontanias too. Not sure if that's still got an update or exactly what. We don't have live stats here, so not completely sure. 
Although they haven't changed that too. I think it's the second on him as well. Top of the key, Jones spins underneath. Lost the handle of it. Going the other direction, Fontana. He's got some help. Pull up, right elbow, no good. Probably not the shot selection you want on a breakaway, two on one chance, but that's also a guy who can score it from anywhere, Rafael Rubel, so hard to blame him no matter where he pulls up from. Didn't get it to go though, 6.15 to go in the first half of action. 23-19, still the score. That's the way it's been for a while. Libazima Core kicks it out. Three ball, no good. Offensive board, that doesn't fall either. Bouncing around, and Central will come up with it. One-on-one -on -one chance. Fontanes. Nice defense inside. Offensive board, and that one is going to find its way in. And GXC will take their time here as a couple guys are slow to get back on the offensive end. Jakeem Payne bringing it up. 20 to shoot. 540 and counting left in the first. 25-19, your score. It's central by six. Payne and a handoff. Jayshon Jones. And now it's Nelson underneath. And he gets a friendly roll. Athletic take to the basket, and he scores. 517 left. And it's 25-21. Georgia Highlands still down four. And Coach Gerald Fitch for the Titans has seen something he wants to correct. We will take a break. It's 25-21, the lead. Still got a tight one here. Chargers hanging in there with the two-seeded Titans. Back after this, it's the regular season home finale from Chargers Sports Network. Back underway here, 5.14 to go in the first half. It's GCAA action getting down to the end of the regular season. And number two in the standings, Central Georgia Tech there on top by four over current fifth-seeded Georgia Highlands. That one's intercepted and going the other way. Well, I thought he might slam it down with authority, but it's two points all the same. Iba Zimakur has six points. Tallest player on this team for Georgia Highlands. Him and Mamadou Diop both stand at 6'9", or at least that's their listed height on the roster. It's always kind of a known fact in basketball that you add another inch or two. No good on that possession for the Titans. Chargers going to try and take advantage. They could cut this one, and they'll tie it as a matter of fact. Four straight points for Abraham Ibezimakor. St. Paul High School grad and the Togo Lees has us tied at 25. 4.15 to go in the half. Montagna's going to hand it off. Tenepe. Nice poke from behind from Jay Sean Jones, but he couldn't take it away, and now he will give up a foul there. He doesn't like it. It was hard defense. That's what you want, even though you give up the foul. No problems with that one. Well, we're going to go to another media break, so we will step aside once more. 4.04 to go on the first. After Jay Sean Jones picks up a Chargers foul there, third of the half. We're tied at 25. Quick little four point run. All coming from Abraham Ibezimakor. We'll be back.
Four minutes, four seconds to go. First half action between the Titans of Central Georgia Tech and the Georgia Highlands Chargers. Titans with it now. Kasai Fontanya says it, hands it off, sets a pick for Tenebe, gives it to Ruben. Ruben into the corner. Tenebe double teamed, pivots out. Left wing three won't go, and it's just not been his night. Emmanuel Jones has not had those wing shots fall. He's taken four or five now by my count. Underneath pass, and they will pull it back out along the baseline. An extra pass. Jay Sean Jones, no good. Offensive board off balance, but setting himself back up and scoring is Mohamed Kante. Three and a little bit of change to go, and GHC has their first lead in a while. It's 27-25. Titans trying to take back the lead. They could do so with a three. And they're going to try one, another attempt, and that's a complete air ball. Thought about going long, but Conte thought better of it. Titans got back well defensively. The pump fake, pass inside, it's deflected. Nelson gets it right back. He's got some space on that left wing. Won't use it, he will play it to Payne instead. Payne coming out of Douglasville, but both he and Nelson graduates of Alexander High School. And the Alexander connection leads to a long range three. Payne provides for Nelson. And Georgia Highlands had their largest lead of the afternoon. It's 30 to 25. 2.30 to go in the half. And, well, 2.32 to be exact. Another timeout for Georgia. Central Georgia Tech, I should say. They're going to talk it over. Coach Fitch hasn't been pleased. It's a 30-second timeout. Quick break. We'll be right back. Thirty twenty-five, and Georgia Highlands playing their best basketball of the game in these past couple of minutes. It was 23-19 earlier on, and since then it's been an 11-2 run for the Chargers here at home. It's given them their largest lead of the game at five. Pass a little bit outside of Jeremy Sims, but he's able to pull it in. Ruben. Looking for a screen, gets it. Tries to drive inside, and a long three. Took a bounce, that almost dropped. He had the tallest player on Georgia Highlands defense and was still able to score. This is a nice slam, but it won't count as they're going to call. Uh, let's see, they got Mamadou Diop for, yeah, they're going to get Diop because he kind of screened off the defensive player. He extended his arms out. It didn't allow him his space, so it's an offensive foul away from the shot. Unfortunate, because it was a nice finish by Payne, but instead it's the offensive foul on Mamadou Diop. Going the other way, no good. Off the front of the iron for the Titans. Coming the other way, Georgia Highlands trying to go quickly. They see the numerical advantage. It's Nelson, and he could not get his second straight. Made one earlier. Diop going to switch it right back out there to him. Everybody moved on the shot fake. Could not score it inside. Some extra contact, but no foul. Oh, wow. Florian Tenebe was not looking to where he was passing it to. And he passed it literally into the Charger bench. There was nobody in there in blue. Nobody even on that side of the floor. And Tenebe is just going to give the ball away. 131 to go in the first half, and it stays a five-point advantage for the Chargers. Remember, it was 22-21 at halftime in the last game between these two. Central Georgia Tech went on to dominate that second half and win by almost 20. Left wing three ball, that's no good. Offensive board, acrobatic play, and the finish off the glass. Counted for Jakeem Payne. That's a grown man's put back. Minute to play, seven point advantage. Highlands continuing to play solid basketball. It's showing on the scoreboard. Tenebe into the corner. Rubo drives underneath, no good. The foul will bail him out. That's another one on Mamadou Diop. It's two in the last minute or so. Hopefully it's only two in the half on him. 
No, it's three. I was a little worried of that. I thought he had had one earlier in the, in the half, and that's true. So three fouls now. We're still in the first half. So Diop is probably going to have to check out. We'll see Ibizimakor come in to replace him. He just now realized it, and so he'll come have a seat. Good news is Ibizimakor has had a really good first half, too. Probably about the best substitute forward you're going to see in the GCAA. First free throw did not drop for Fontanias, but the second one does. Going quickly. Conte shrugs off a defender, but his layup doesn't go. Fighting for the offensive board. And that touched the Titans last. They couldn't grab the defensive rebound. 47.5 to go in half number one. It's 32-26. Six-point Chargers advantage right now. Payne is going to be the one to inbound from the sideline there. But first Central is just going to try and clear up some of the moisture on the floor. That's Nelson Johnson Jr. out there. Checked in, I think, for the first time. At least the first time that I've recognized tonight for the visitors. He came in with the towel to mop things up. Conte lost it. And the double clutch trying to pass the ball and turned out a little bit strange. Didn't work. Well, no good on the layup. The offensive board falls to Fontanias. Would have been great for the Titans if he didn't have a foot out of bounds. 40 seconds to play. And Highlands could cut this so about 10 seconds left on the game clock. That's about the difference between shot and game clock right now. Double screen for Payne. Tried to pass it inside. They had it covered, but it still found Ibazima Core. Pass underneath, 23.6 in the half, and that is when Conte is fouled. Should be a shooting foul. It'll be two shots. As they get Sims for his second. There'll be a couple guys potentially in foul trouble for both teams, really. Something to monitor in the second half. Chargers with a much bigger bench to rely on. They got 11 guys they can go to. Only eight made the trip today from Macon for Central Georgia Tech. And, well, missing both the free throws, leaving three points at the line at the end of the half is Muhammad Conte. It's one of the highlights of the Chargers' first half. They scored really effectively at the free throw line. But not so on that last sequence. Down to eight seconds. Shot clock is off. Five, four, three. And the three ball, no good. Offensive board, that counts. Just before the buzzer sounds, the putback from Jeremy Sims cuts the lead to four. We got a good one, folks. Halftime, and it's 32-28. Georgia Highlands on top by four against the Titans of Central Georgia Tech. Well, you aren't going to want to miss this second half. Stick around with us. Now, 15 minutes, we will bring you the second half of action. Find out who wins this one. Tight one and a lot of seeding in the conference tournament is at stake. We'll see who gets this one.
Welcome back. Couple minutes before we get the second half of action underway. It's 32-28 if you're just joining us. The lead for Georgia Highlands over the Titans of Central Georgia Tech. Danny Catula with y'all. Glad you're with us on the Chargers Sports Network. And so let's take a look before we get into the second half of what the potential seeding scenarios are in the GCAA. That's a conference that both these two teams call home. You got nine teams in the conference. Albany Tech has virtually locked up the top seed. They're 12 and two. They got two more games to go. They're playing right now. They've uh, actually they're probably just tipping off right now. Tip off at uh, seven. They're taking on South Georgia, but they've also got a game after that against South Southern Crescent Tech, and I'd be really surprised if they lose that. Assuming Albany Tech wins one of those two games, they're the one seed. Done and dusted. Then you got Central Georgia Tech, who's here tonight. They're sitting at 11-4. and four. This is their last game. If they win tonight, they're in the clubhouse at 12-4. and four. Nobody can catch them. They've got second place locked up. Now it gets a lot more interesting if Georgia Highlands wins tonight because it would put Central Georgia Tech finished at 11 and 5 Georgia Highlands would be at 10 and 5 and then you got South Georgia and South Georgia Tech who were at 9 and 5 each right now it's a three-way tie all three of those teams South Georgia South Georgia Tech and Georgia Highlands have a 9 and 5 conference record so Georgia Highlands could not only pass those other two schools with a win tonight and some help they could also keep Central Georgia Tech within their sights too the second seed is not impossible for Georgia Highlands to get. They would have to win tonight, and then it would completely open it up for any of those four teams. Behind them, by the way, if you were curious, East Georgia, Gordon, Andrew, and Southern Crescent Tech in that order. Those are the nine, and we get the second half going with the stage set. Five seconds underway and counting. We got the second half of action for you. It's a four-point lead for Georgia Highlands Chargers ahead of Central Georgia Tech. King Payne's got it. He will hand it off to Jaquan Nelson. Nelson switches in the left corner. It's Payne again. Didn't knock the three down, but he was knocked down. And he will shoot three free throws after the foul on Jeremy Sams. I believe it's also three fouls on Sams. Yeah, it is. The PA announcer across from us, Doug, confirming that. So three fouls now. A little foul trouble on Sams. A couple other guys have two, if I remember correctly, for the visitors. And also keep in mind three fouls for Highlands on Mamadou Diop. He's in a bit of foul trouble. And, of course, he's not on the floor right now. First free throw good. Second no good. But remember, it was a three-point shot that Payne was fouled on. So we'll have one more. One of two at the line so far on this trip. It was Abraham Ibazimakor off the bench who went four for four shooting. And two of two at the free throw line to lead both teams. Only player in double digits. Jakeem Payne adds two to his total. He's up to four. Jaquan Nelson had eight points. Only player to make a three-pointer for Georgia Highlands. That's a big story. They could even be up by more if they were just shooting the ball a little better. They were one of nine at the three-point line in the first half. And that's unlike them. That's usually the way they catch up. It's been a much more composed effort for them today. Pass inside is going to yield a basket from Christian Torres. He'll knock in two more. And it's 34-30 underneath. The ball's going to stay with the Chargers. Torres had six points. Leading the team for the Titans was Rafael Rubel. He had nine points. As GXC gets the ball back in underneath. Kind of a weird floating shot and another foul. Two quick ones on Central Georgia Tech. This one is going to go against Torres. And so going to the line for two is Jaquan Nelson. Freshman guard out of Rome. We've mentioned it before. Alexander High. Chargers, by the way, this year has the first free throw no good. They have a 6-4 and four home record, 7-8 and eight away. Being here in the corral has made a difference over the course of the season. Second free throw drops for Nilsson. He's got nine tonight. And it's a five-point lead for GHC. Largest it's been was six. That was right towards the end of the half. 
as Tenebe is going to give it up to the point guard, Ruwa. Ruwa gets it right back where it came from. Tenebe had two guys come close out, force him off the three point line, drives inside instead, and says, hey, I'll just score from there. Nice layup, and it's 35 32. Road team in dark blue, only down by three. Long two from the right elbow. That doesn't drop. Defensive board fought four and one by Torres. Here comes Central Georgia Tech. Pass to Tenebe. Knocked down the layup earlier on. Three guys on him. They're going to chase Torres off the line. Great defense inside by Baldwin to block it. Steal it away. GHC wide open three. Nilsson not going to pass that up. He drains it. And it's 38-32. Jaquan Nelson has 12. That leads both teams now. Full court pressure, it's Manlook. Nelson defending Tenebe. And they have really made him a defensive focus. The Chargers knew he was their main scorer and they have not allowed him to get any open looks. It's worked too, he's hardly scored. Rubel's picked up the offensive slack in his absence. Passed inside to Torres, who had a nice first half to Rubo. Will take the long three, no good. Nice little step back there, though. Kamani Hopkinson's gonna fight inside for the rebound and pick it up. Chargers going on the break, they've got numbers! And the finish inside from Hopkinson. Good pass inside, and it's great basketball for the Chargers. Team play has them up by eight, three minutes into the second period. 40 to 32 is that score. Rubel. He's across half court. Central Georgia doesn't look like they have a whole lot of answers right now for the Chargers' man defense. It's just been physical. GHC not giving up any open looks. Well, as I say that, they're going to give up a layup, but that doesn't go. Emmanuel Jones has had some trouble scoring today. Had a lot of open looks, just hasn't gotten too many to drop. And he is a talented player, just not been his night so far. Here's Nelson. Knocked down a three already this half. He'll drive inside and make the extra pass. No good from 10 for Hopkinson. And going quickly. The bucket is good in transition. Nobody over there except for Florian Tenebe. And he'll take advantage of the extra space. 16 to play. It's 40 to 34. Lead cut to six, but Highland's still on top. Here's Payne. He'll bounce it to Hopkinson. And Mohamed Kante ends up with it. Payne, after the handoff, gets a screen from Baldwin. And he's down to five to shoot. He'll pass it inside. Baldwin pivots underneath. And he scores! Count the baskets! Big man finish inside from Cameron Baldwin. And he'll go to the line to try and make it three the old-fashioned way. Baldwin led the team in rebounds in the first half. He had a game high five actually in that first period. On track for double digits in that category, although he can't finish the and one attempt. Six points, five rebounds for Baldwin right now. 15 and a half left, eight point advantage for the home team. Right wing, and again, they are not letting Tenebe get open shots, forcing him off the line. And well, that's why they do it. Got it in somebody else's hands, couldn't score. Bounce pass inside, quick look. Oh, and it just doesn't fall. Such an unlucky roll. And on the defensive board, everybody was kind of shifted out of position. Baldwin ended up committing a loose ball foul. So they're gonna get Baldwin for the first on the team. And looks like maybe his second foul the game. Well, Central going to take their time getting across half court. Only got three more seconds to get across. They do. Wasn't a lot of pressure. Now there's going to be a double team from Highlands. Central Georgia Tech breaking it pretty easily. Inside left post stolen away. Clever from Hopkinson. It was undersized in there, but still made the defensive play. Creative. Muhammad Kante in transition scores it. Under 15 to play. It's a 10-point advantage. First time either team is led by double digits. No timeout so far for head coach Gerald Fick. He took two team timeouts in that first half. So we got a couple to work with. 
see what we got here. It's going to be a foul on the ball, I think. They'll get Muhammad Conte. Conte going to pick up his first. It's the second on Highlands in the half. 1440 to go, second half action. And it's Chargers by 10. Some great basketball from Jaquan Nelson and Cameron Baldwin, especially, have the home team up by 10. We'll be back after this media timeout. You're listening to the Chargers Sports Network. Well, one media timeout is over and done with here in this second half. It's 44-34 at this juncture of the game. Georgia Highlands is looking good right now, and it's a pretty important basketball game when you think about what it could mean as far as your chances in the conference tournament. They used all five seconds that they were allotted that time underneath the basket, but Central made it work. Ted Bay going to pass it up. Top of the key. The three ball is short from Emmanuel Jones. Continuing to struggle from beyond the three-point line especially. Conte lost his handle. Not the best of dribble moves. Here's Nelson. Switches to Payne. Going to get a screen. And the roll. Kicked out. Jones switches in the corner. Conte thought about a three. He's got five to shoot now underneath. Passes it out. Payne's got to get something up. Lost the handle. Two, one to shoot. Put it up. They didn't in time. And it fell, but unfortunately it won't count. Jayshon Jones out of Shelbyville, Tennessee. His bucket will not count. 44-34 still the score. Well, not for long. Not sure what GXC was doing on defense, but easy slam inside from Christian Torres. He will not have an easier two points than that all night long. And, well, Georgia Highlands has seen enough. They decide they're going to take a timeout, although they almost didn't get it in time. Clever from Rubel to come in and try to steal it. He almost got away with it. 13.40 left in the game, and, well, got a really interesting contest for you. Still a tight one, 44-36. It's a full timeout. We'll take a break. Okay, 13.40 to go in the game, and we got a, an eight-point lead for Highlands here in the corral. Second half of action, three fouls against the visiting Titans, two against Highlands. No issues here early on. A lot of basketball to play in the second half. Charger is going to get us back underway. Nelson passes it into Jones. 20 on the shot clock. Nelson has it again, top of the key. Screen, Nelson had it poked away. And it falls into the hands of Torres eventually. Titans working on offense. Trying to set something up is Rubel. He will get it to Fortanes. And inside, Torres traveled. You know, so they almost hit a little kid in front of us, unfortunately. 
Uh, no, actually, instead of a travel, well, they're going to get a push instead. It'll be a foul underneath on Georgia Highlands. So before the travel, the foul, it's Ibazimakur who's checked in. Only his first foul, and he's in right now because Mamadou Diop has three. So he'll just have to watch his fouls. Don't want to have both your centers in foul trouble. Of course, with one foul, he's nowhere near that so far. In the left corner, the extra pass. Inside, Fontanias had it taken away, but it just fell right in the bread basket of Xavier Van. Van is going to check in, I think, for the first time tonight. And he's made his first bucket. So two for the freshman shooting guard, Xavier Van. And he was also fouled. 44-38 is the new score. And we'll go ahead and fill the line. It's a one-shot foul and one chance for Van. And he missed the extra free throw, although he did get his own offensive rebound. Tenebe in the corner. Fontanya sands it off. Van has it again. Thinking about kicking it out, he will. Tenebe's got it. Five to shoot. Tenebe going to work. Long two. It is no good. Iba Zimakor has the defensive board for the Chargers. Twelve and a half in the game. Six-point advantage for GHC. They've led the entirety of the second half. The three ball, no good from Echo Ebla. And, well, we got a little bit of extracurriculars going on. They've already whistled the play dead, and neither player will give the ball up. Referee's going to have to get in there and just solve things. And, well, do we have anything extra? Well, it's going to end up just being a tie ball, and the possession arrow, I think, belongs to Central Georgia Tech. Nothing more. 12 minutes left in the game, 44-38. Titans down six with the ball. Tenebe. Moving inside, kicks it out. Thought about the left wing three. Instead driving inside was Fontanes. Three ball is taken and not dropped by Torres. Offensive board, and that's why you can't leave Tenebe open. He knocks down the two, 44-40 the score. Tenebe has his first points tonight with that one. In the paint, Conte. He was bumped inside, didn't get any mercy from the referees and try to go quickly. There's some numbers for the Titans. Tenebe. Trying to drive, has a double team, passed inside. And if he would have just seen the opposite corner, it was wide open. Titans do have the ball right back, and there's going to be a foul in the interior. Jayshon Jones jumped and got him. Let's see, yeah, they are going to get Jayshon Jones for it. Fourth, fifth now on Highlands in the half. Only the first, I believe, on Jayshon Jones personally, but five fouls, you're already getting into that bonus area. With a couple more fouls, still 11 and a half to play. Could be a problem for Highlands down the stretch, something to monitor. First free throw is good from Christian Torres. Torres had nine in the last game. He played the most minutes of anybody. It was he and Tenebe for the Titans in the other game against GHC, who played 35 of 40 possible minutes. Second one is good as well from Torres. He goes two for two with the line, and we got a two-point game. Smallest it's been since the first half. GHC undergoing a little bit of an offensive drought. They could use a bucket. 11-10, 15 to shoot. Iba Zimakor had the double team, kicked it back out. Joe. He's trapped in the corner, kicks it out. Payne, Payne gonna try and drive. Gets it underneath, Baldwin kicks it out. Five to shoot, the three ball, no good. And it didn't even hit the rim. So it touched GHC last, but even if it didn't, it would have been a shot clock violation, never hit the rim. Just hit off the backboard awkwardly. So for a couple reasons, it's Titans ball, take your pick. And now full court pressure, GHC would love a turnover. Doesn't look like they'll get one though, Torres. Nobody came out to him, so he decides, well, I guess I'll bring the ball up. Didn't seem particularly excited about it, but got it across with no issue. And just trying to bleed the clock a little bit, slow things down, get a good look. 
Pass inside, deflected. Fontanes got hit. And they'll call the foul on Giovanni Equibla. Equibla, the 6 1 freshman guard from Johns Creek High School. Listed as being from Norcross. Central Georgia still have a about a three hour drive back all the way down through downtown Atlanta and into Macon coming up later tonight. Can't say I envy them. That's gonna be a uh, bus that gets in pretty late on in the evening. Not a fun drive either. Three ball is not gonna fall. Tedebe just couldn't get it to drop. That's unlike him. And they're gonna go quickly, Georgia Highlands. Ekwe Blah takes the long two and he couldn't get it to go. He found his spot, just did not get the roll. Coming down to 10 to play halfway through the second half. Still a two point advantage, but that's it for Georgia Highlands. They had a 10 point lead and it's been mostly vanquished. 15 seconds taken right off the shot clock. Titans taking their time every time down the floor. Tenebe just cannot find the look that he wants. Finally passed it away. Five seconds to shoot on the clock. I don't know if they know that. One to shoot, gotta shoot it. Long range, no good. And that's a guy who's really low on confidence, you imagine. Christian Torres just has not scored his three-pointers today. Cheerleaders in full voice. Got a mostly scattered crowd here at the Corral. Over nine to play in this one. Nelson, he went down. Looks like he was fouled, but no call. Some extra contact inside. That's not called either. The end of the shot clock yields an attempt, but it's no good from Cameron Baldwin. All right, down to nine and counting to play. Got a media break coming up at the next stoppage. And in the meantime, neither team has scored in a while. Diop inside playing defense, and it ends up being, oh, they're going to get him for a foul. It was great defense inside, and that's unfortunate because they put Diop in with his three fouls. And they are going to, yeah, put a foul on him. It's the seventh on the team in the half, so it gets worse because that's going to bring us some bonus shooting free throws. Diop just asking for clarification. He doesn't like the call. He's being respectful about it, just trying to see if he can get a good explanation. That's a big problem. Diop has four. And one and one chance for Central Georgia on the other side of this break to tie this game. Come back in a moment with us. We'll take a short break. 8.51 to go in the second half. Highlands by two. Coming down to it, folks, a really important next four or five minutes, this kind of start of the home stretch in the basketball game. 44-42 is the Georgia Highlands advantage, smallest it's been since back in the first period. Chargers, again, taking their sweet time getting out of the huddle, and I think the referees today are starting to get a bit impatient about it. It almost cost them a bucket in the first half. This is a free throw situation, so it wouldn't be as catastrophic if they were late getting back in. Of course, at a certain point, this would be an extreme case. The referees could decide to issue a technical foul. I'd be surprised if we get into that type of territory. One and one chance at the free throw line. It's Christian Torres. He knocked in the first one off the back of the rim and in. So you got 44-43, the current state of affairs. With 8.51 to play. Torres goes through his routine. And his second one's too strong. And Diop is still out there with four fouls. He dropped the rebound completely, but was able to pick it back up. I'm really surprised Ibazimacor is not in the game right now. Jaquan Nelson was not paying attention, had it stolen from right behind him. And an and one on the other end. Who'd they get on the foul? Because Diop was in the area. Well, thankfully, they're going to get 
Kamani Hopkinson instead. We'll see how many he's got. 8.38 to go, though, and it's the first lead of the half for Central Georgia Tech, and one attempt is coming, too, from Kasai Fontanias. That's good. Three-point play is converted, and so it's 46-44, two-point advantage now in the other direction for the Titans. Highlands needs a bucket. Trying to tie this one back up or potentially take the lead again. With the ball there is Isaiah Logan, Ackworth native, transfer out of I Iowa Wesleyan University, community college out in the Cedar Rapids area. Inside, bucket is good. Big man basket for Mamadou Diop, and he's got four fouls, so he had to be careful not to commit an offensive foul. Knock the bucket in. And with eight to play, we're tied at 46. Deadlocked. A pretty good game here. Screen set for Ruba. He's got Diop on him. You would think that's a mismatch they'd want to exploit, but they won't. Instead, they lob it inside. It was tipped away by Hopkinson, and it stays with the Titans. Now they will make that change with four fouls. Mamadou Diop will step off. I'm surprised they waited that long to do it, but it seems like a good decision. Eva Zimakor has played great minutes anyway. Might as well put him in and not risk the fifth foul for Diop. Pass inside, and it is going to lob its way over to Tedebe. He'll drive inside. Got three guys in the paint around him, but he scores anyway. Unbothered completely. Basket good for Tenebe, and it's 48-46. Titans back up by two. Jakeem Payne bringing the ball up. This is Logan. Top of the key. Hopkinson drives. Two on him. He is fouled. Shooting foul going to go against Xavier Van. He's checked back in recently. Should be the first on Van. It sure is. So going to the line, looks like Hopkinson for two. He'll bring the towel out here. So we don't have one of those fancy mops that they have at the uh, Hawks games. They got the little circular mop, if you know what I'm talking about, where they'll bring it out and just, they got somebody on the floor wiping it up automatically. You gotta do it manually. A Couple of free throws coming for Kamani Hopkinson at a Lauder Hill, Florida. His first one is true. A transfer out of Lincoln University. Went to Dillard High School before that. 6'7", sophomore wing. He's been one of those sophomore leaders on a team that is comprised of a lot of freshmen. Second one, ah, doesn't get the roll. It was short and rimmed out to the right. They're going long, and Iba Zimakor saw it just a little bit too late, although he did keep from... A wide open two attempt being taken. Nice defense inside. Forces the three from Tenebe, and it doesn't drop. Hopkinson going to work inside again. That's going to be a jump ball, and this time the possession arrow belongs to the Chargers. I think GHC wanted a foul in there. But the referees on both sides have been pretty lenient. They've allowed a lot of contact. Let the guys play as much as possible. Ibazimakor to Nelson. Logan extra pass. Payne! Did not get it. It was short. Iba Zimakor could not grab the offensive rebound. Seven minutes to play exactly. Counting down. One point lead for Central Georgia Tech. Titans by one here in the corral. 48-47. Tenepe hands off. Rubal has it on the pass from Fontanias. Tenepe. Searching. Trying to create a shot. Passes inside. Torres faces up. Backdoor cut, extra pass, blocked from behind. Oh, they're going to call a foul on Hopkinson. Kamani Hopkinson had a really nice block, and they're going to whistle him for a foul. There is discontentment from the Highlands fans and from the bench. You can see in front of your screen, head coach J.J. Merritt is not pleased. He's pleading his case to the referees. Of course, it is a lost cause. They've already called it. 48-47, the score, and whether Highlands likes it or not, it's a couple of free throws now for Fontanias underneath the basket. They did get bailed out by that one central. It was the end of the shot clock. 6.36 to go, though, and notwithstanding, two free throws coming for the Titans. First one from Fontanias. It's going to drop. Really nice shooting for him he's got. 
Mohamed Conte checks back in for the Chargers. And actually, it's both number fives coming in. The Titans will bring Emmanuel Jones in as well. Isaiah Van, or sorry, Xavier Van, I should say, checks out for them. They'll grab a break and drink. Second free throw in the meantime is also good. 50 to 47 is the lead for the visiting Titans of Central Georgia Tech. Jakeem Payne going to get some instruction from his head coach. 20 seconds to shoot, six and a half in the game. Nelson. Conte, oh, he went without the ball. Dropped it completely. Nobody on him. Unforced air, and Coach Merritt can't even bear to look. You always know when a coach turns around and they just look in the other direction for a minute. That's, that's when they're upset. I remember seeing that look from my high school coach. I was not a very good high school basketball player. We'll just leave it at that. Driving inside, and a nice look. No good, too strong on the floater from Jones. Defensive board from his Ibizimacor, and that's what he's in there for. Payne trying to go quickly. Telegraphed the pass. Couple of people deflected it. Tenebe going the other direction. Euro step. He's fouled by Ibizimacor inside. He'll shoot two. It's the 10th on the team, and so double bonus the rest of the way. Fouls quickly becoming a problem. And Central exploiting it pretty well to their credit. Florian Tenebe is going to go and shoot a couple. His first trip to the line. Sophomore shooting guard, again, was electric. He was ten, 7 of 10 from the floor, 2 of 4 from beyond the three-point line in the first contest between these two. Picked up 22 points, 5 assists, 4 rebounds, 3 steals, threw in a block, 2. Today has not been quite as dominant for him. He came off the bench, but he's played pretty much every minute since. 5.47 left. Missed the front end, made the second. And so you got a four-point advantage. Two possessions for the first time in a while for the Titans. Georgia Highlands trying to cut this down. Plenty of time. They got to keep things close. Nelson. Payne. Corner. Baldwin. Eva Zimacor wants it inside. Baldwin backs down his defender from the corner. Now here's Payne. Eva Zimacor wanted it, takes it, no good. Flew in to get his offensive board, but couldn't. Eva Zimacor got the pass, but didn't get the bucket. Five to play. Four point lead for Central. Right side screen, Eva Zimacor switches. Ruba passes inside, short corner. And kicked back out by Torres. Rua kicks it out. Three ball, Fontanias, no good. Off the front of the iron, defensive board, dribbles. And found by Conte underneath. The layup is good and a much needed bucket to stop the bleeding. Cameron Baldwin has it. 51-49. Four and a half left in this one. Game just keeps getting better. 4.30 exactly now on the clock. Again, a two-point deficit right now. Couple of screens. Nice defense from Ibezima Core on the ball. Passed inside. Torres had two, three guys on him. It still rolls around and falls anyway. Nice finish by Christian Torres. Georgia Highlands get it up quickly. 25 to shoot. 4-10 left on the game clock. Underneath pass. Conte gets it to go despite the contact. Two more for him, four minutes left, 53-51. Both sides scoring a little more freely. We got a basketball game on our hands. Wide open was Tenebe, but he didn't take the shot. Drove inside instead. Fontanas didn't shoot either from the corner. Torres passing up a shot as well in the corner. Fontanas driving inside. And the block from Baldwin, rejected. Here comes Payne, he's got some help. He'll go alone, and he lost the ball completely. I don't know what he was doing, and he had a wide open pass. Maybe trying to go for the acrobatic dunk. Would have been nice. Inside, the layup is no good. The tip also doesn't fall. Fontanez too strong. Three chances at open layups. Central missed all of them. Nelson faked the three. He's inside the Euro. Underneath, he scores. Tied at 53. Timeout, Chargers. Jakeem Payne is in a little bit of pain at the moment, it looks like. 
Hopefully he'll be able to carry on. We're tied at 53. What a bucket inside. And that brings us to, well, it was a 30-second timeout that converts to a media. 3.13 to go. It's a media break. Folks, we have a finish on our hands if the first 37 minutes have been any indication. 3.13 left. We'll have the final three. Right here on the Chargers Sports Network in a moment. Don't go away. Stick with us. This time it's the Chargers out of the huddle first after they have been the better side in the past couple of minutes. They were down by four just a minute and a half ago, and now we're tied at 53 apiece. Great basketball game. Both sides have had their runs, their moments of advantage, and we are deadlocked for now. Three minutes, 10 seconds, and the clock is counting. That's all that's left for one of these two teams to win it. Tenebe off the screen, kicks to his left, wide open three in the corner. It's no good. Offensive board though is gonna fall to Torres. Three ball, right wing and it finally drops. First one of the night from three point land for Emmanuel Jones. He had missed a lot before then, but he gets the one in a big way. And in a big moment, 56-53 the lead. 2.35 left to go. Jakeem Payne taking his time, 15 to shoot. Chargers trying to organize something, hand off to Conte. Conte gets a screen to his left, he lost the ball. And it's not been his first turnover today. Shake of the head from Coach Merritt. They have to play defense, gotta get a stop. Kamani Hopkinson is at the scorer's table ready to check in and he's trying to animate his guys. That's nice defense. Little tap away and well, Interesting, because Tenebe has plenty of time to get back across half court, but now he got seven to shoot. He'll take the shot. Three ball is no good. Off to the right. Ibazima Core with the board. Highlands had a chance to go quickly. Instead, they'll take their time. Nelson brought it back out. 148 to play. Three-point game. Jaquan Nelson driving inside. He's fouled. Only the fifth on the team in the half. See how many it is on Jones. It's his third. So in a minute 44, that shouldn't be a problem for him. Kamani Hopkinson, we mentioned, is going to come back in. Muhammad Kante will check out. 144 left. Three-point game. Highlands under the basket. They get it to Nelson. Fake the three. Kicks it out. Hopkinson left elbow drives. He is fouled. Two fouls in a row, and now maybe it is a problem for Jones. He's got four. It's the fourth on the power forward for Central Georgia Tech. He'll have to monitor that. 138 in the game, two big free throws on the shooting foul. Kamani Hopkinson will take him. Could cut it to one. Ah, first one's off to the left, doesn't fall. Cannot leave points at the charity stripe at this stage in the game. It's a tight contest, one possession game right now. Could really use this. 98 seconds to play. Second one is good from Hopkinson. Splits the pair. 56-54 the score. And they'll make another change, the Chargers. Ibazimakor steps off, and they'll bring in a guard to replace him. The football pass across court, and it finds its target, Tenebe. Just ran the length of the floor, and nobody followed him. Minute 30 to play. Nice handles, good crossover move. Tenebe has it now. His pass deflected. Baldwin jumped in the air and got it. Nelson going quickly two on him. Underneath, creative, but couldn't score it. Two point game, and there's advantage numbers, but Central Georgia Tech will wisely 
pull it back out and call the timeout. 109 to go, 23 on the shot clock. They could cut it to about uh, 45 seconds, let's say, if they use the full shot clock. They're going to call a timeout, and it is a full, so we'll take a break. Minute and nine seconds to play, 56-54 is the Central Georgia Tech lead off a three ball. Coming from Emmanuel Jones. That time of the basketball game where the best players step up and prove themselves. Georgia Highlands down by two, minute nine to play. And the Titans have it. Trying to inbound it, and this was not a successful inbounds play, but I guess they did get it in barely in time. Double team, the pass inside too high for Tenaban. He lost it. Big turnover for the Chargers. They could tie or take the lead. Nelson going to pull it back out, take his time. Jones had a look for three, didn't take it. 53 to shoot. Three ball. Nelson, no good. I don't think that's the look they wanted, to be honest. No time to foul yet. 45 seconds to go. There'd be a 20 second difference, and it's only a two point game. I don't think you foul right here. And they're not going to, they're just going to double team. Tanabe, ooh, picked up his dribble, almost traveled. And a wide open three in the corner. It's no good. Defensive board for the Chargers. They got a break. Two on one. Hopkinson inside. Payne, it's good! And the foul! We are level at 56. And a chance for the Chargers to take the lead. Huge defensive position. Leads to points. Jakeem Payne is going to have a chance to give the Chargers the lead all of a sudden, turn a defense into offense, and a great pass, you have to say, too, from Hopkinson. He could have easily tried to take it himself, made the unselfish play. Great defense, great pass, great finish, too, with contact. The type of play that Highlands needed, and the free throw goes. Clutch moment. Three-point play for Payne. 24.7 to play. They could hold for the final shot if they want to. The Titans, and they've got a timeout. They'll use it. 19.8 to go. We'll see what they draw up. Friends, we got a finish on our hands. We'll take a quick break, 19.8 to play. It is 57-56 Highlands with the lead after the three-point play from Jakeem Payne. Just a shade under 20 seconds left to play. Georgia Highlands by one, but the Titans have the ball. They try to get the ball in, and again, they wait till the very end of the five-second sequence, but they make it happen. Rubal, Rubal underneath, kicks it out. Top of the key, Tenebe, he's the guy, 10 seconds. Got to get a shot off, they're down by one. Any bucket wins the game, Rubal. Rubal, five seconds, kicks it out, it's stolen! Chargers got it, big foul! 2.7 to play! And the Chargers are one step closer to getting the win. It's going to be a foul on Jeremy Sams, his fourth. And there's a couple guys on the floor in a bit of pain. The 
most notable, it looks like a potentially serious injury is Tenebe over there. I mean, he's got head and hands, towel covering his eyes. I mean, you really hope it's nothing serious, but that, that doesn't look good. I wonder if he actually got hit in the face. It might be an open wound, actually. Hard to tell. Meantime, uh, I think it was Hopkinson who came in there and got the steal, if I remember correctly. And he got fouled pretty hard, so... He's tough. He'll play on. And Tenebe in the meantime, yeah, I think they're playing pressure. There might be actually, he might have some blood on his face. Well, 2.7 to go. It's 57-56. A big steal for Highlands. And it's the eighth foul on Central Georgia Tech in the half. So it's going to be a one and one chance. Now, this is interesting. Titans, I believe, are out of timeouts. I don't know that for sure, but just by my count, I think they've used them all. So if they miss, should be Hopkinson to take the free throw here. If he misses the one and one, the Titans are going to have to try and go the length of the floor in 2.7 seconds, but they'll have a chance. You could almost argue that it would be better for Highlands if they, let's say they make the first free throw and they have a second one. I think you'd almost rather miss the free throw and not give Central Georgia a chance to try and set up because either way they're going to take a three. And either way, a three is going to extend the game or win it for them. If you make both free throws and give them a chance to inbound and set a play up and run it, I think that almost works to your detriment. Tough to give away a free point, though, with a line on purpose. See, every point counts at this stage in the game. Some decisions to make for Georgia Highlands and some conversations strategically to be had by the Titans as well. They got to decide if it is a loose ball and this free throw is missed, what's the best way you can get up the floor in 2.7? Got to get the shot up, of course, too. I mean, I think if you play it right and you've got a strategy in place, you can get to about the three-point line. Probably a normal three-pointer, maybe 25 feet, 30 at the most. And they've got guys that can shoot it from there. Emmanuel Jones made one earlier. Pretty clutch one to put him up three at the time. Duval has scored. So has Jeremy Sams from the three-point line tonight. And, yeah, I think they've had to just clean up actual blood there by the NJCAA logo. I think that's what's causing the delay here. And they are tending to Tenebe in the meantime. All right, so it's Hopkinson. Once we get the sanitary situation sorted out, Hopkinson's going to go to the line for one and one. And after that, we'll be down to 2.7. Got some disinfectant out there, cleaning it all up, making sure it's all safe. Of course, with an open wound with blood, you got to be extra careful. Player safety at stake. It looks like they've got it cleaned up, and they're just going to deal with the moisture now with the towel like before. And all this, it is adding pressure for Hopkinson. He's got to think about it a little more. Think about it in football when you take a timeout to ice the kicker. That's kind of incidentally what's happening right now. Obviously, it's no purposeful thing from the Titans. But the fact that we've had so much stoppage, it's going to have to be that much more of a pressure moment maybe for Kamani Hopkinson. At a Lauder Hill, Florida, big free throw sequence here. With 2.7 left, one point lead already for Highlands. Trying to finish this one off and catapult into third in the standings. Chance for second. First free throw drops. Two point lead. And now if you make this, 
If you're going to make this, then you drop in another point and you lead by three. It's 58-56 right now. Then you cannot lose the game. And he makes it. But it's going to be, oh, did they call a timeout here? No, GXC did not. The referee actually made an error and thought that they called. I was going to say I would not call a timeout if I were GXC. Do not let them set this up. All right, so here we go, 2.7. Oh, what happened here? Whoa. So, okay, this is fascinating because they passed it in across the baseline. They can do that. I think that's legal. And Hopkinson came in and thought the ball was already in play, and it wasn't. Hopkinson came into the inbounds area. He's not allowed to do that. Now, is this... What's the result of this? Is it a warning or is it a technical foul shot? Because hold on, this just got crazy. What are they going to do? Should be a warning. It's the first time. Same thing as if you were to, to reach over when you're trying to play defense on the, the inbounder. It's the same thing. They're going to do the warning. So a, a, it's a sideline inbounds warning. So nothing happens. They're just going to inbound it again. So let's see, 2.7 will do it over again. And to make it even more dramatic, 59-56. They'll repeat the process. Full court heave, it finds a player, but they need a three, and they're not gonna get anything. Well, they stopped the clock with 0.5. Pretty sure the game ended though, right? Yeah, it did. Okay, <laughs> well, a wild ending. They actually got it too far down the court because they needed a three-pointer. Kasai Fontanius was under the basket and just tried to pass it out to somebody. Didn't work out. Well, that's final. Georgia Highlands is going to take this one in a fascinating, thrilling contest. And the final score, 59-56. Chargers take it, and with that, they officially take control of third place. Now, that's pending a couple other games. There's two other teams who were tied coming into the night at 9-5. Highlands just moved to 10-5. Two other teams playing, South Georgia and South Georgia Tech. And obviously if they win, then they will also be tied again with Highlands at 10 and 5. So that's something to keep in mind. And then, of course, Central Georgia, they're going to drop to 11 and 5. That was their last game of the regular season. And now, if they had won tonight, they would have locked up number two. Now they got to wait some other results. We could see some tiebreakers come into play. It's going to get awfully interesting. But they are done, and then you got some other teams playing. I think almost everybody's playing Saturday uh, is the last game day. That is last game day for Georgia Highlands. They are headed to Andrew College, headed down south to Cuthbert, Georgia. Or no, sorry, that is the, well, actually, it's the same. It's the men and the women. I was looking at the wrong sheet of paper, but turned out to be the right information anyway. And if you're wondering about the GCAA tournament, of course, that is right upon us. It is starting in less than a week. Tuesday is the opening round. I think that goes for the women and the men. The women were supposed to be in action tonight, too, by the way. If you were here with us hoping to see the women's game that was supposed to start at 5.30, we moved the men's game up and canceled the women's game. Uh, Central Georgia Tech, as I understand it, did not have enough players uh, to make the trip, and so that ends up being a forfeit win, if I understand correctly, for Georgia Highlands. But, folks, that is all from us and for what we imagine will be the last time this season here in the Corral as far as basketball is concerned. It has been a pleasure bringing you tonight's broadcast for Athletic Director Brandon Harrell, David, the broadcast engineer to my left, everybody who makes these Charger Sports Network broadcasts possible. My name is Danny Katula saying thanks for being with us. Have a fantastic night, and go Chargers.